The LA paradox is one of the most famous anomalies in expected utility theory. The paradox was first identified by Maurice Allais, 1953. It emerges from the pattern of response to two pairs of bets. The following example comes from Kahneman and Tversky, 1979. For choice one, the player is asked to choose one of the following bets. Under bet A, the player wins. $2,500 with probability 33%. $2,400 with probability 66%. $0 with probability 1%. Under bet B, the player wins. $2,400 with probability 100%. Which do you prefer? When Kahneman and Tversky ran this experiment, 82% of participants chose option B. For choice 2, the player is again asked to choose one of two bets. Under bet C, the player wins. $2,500 with probability 33%. $0 with probability 67%. Under bet D, the player wins. $2,400 with probability 34%. $0 with probability 66%. Which do you prefer? When Kahneman and Tversky ran this experiment, 83% of participants chose option C. Let's examine this pair of preferences, with over 80% of experimental participants selecting B in choice 1 and C in choice 2. According to expected utility theory, if an agent selects B, the expected utility of B must be greater than the expected utility of A. That is, the utility of 2400 is greater than 0.33 times the utility of 2500, plus 0.66 times the utility of 2400 plus 0.01 times the utility of zero. We can simplify that to 0.34 times the utility of 2400 is greater than 0.33 times the utility of 2500 plus 0.01 times the utility of zero. We can do the same analysis with the second choice. According to expected utility theory, if an agent selects C, the expected utility of C must be greater than the expected utility of D. That is, 0.33 times the utility of 2,500 plus 0.67 times the utility of zero is greater than 0.34 times the utility of 2,400 plus 0.66 times the utility of zero. We can simplify that to 0.33 times the utility of 2,500 plus 0.01 times the utility of zero is greater than 0.34 times the utility of 2,400. This is a contradiction. The two inequalities point in opposite directions. Under expected utility theory, if an agent chooses A, it should choose C. And if the agent chooses B, it should choose D. Why does this occur? What axiom is being breached? To understand this, I will show you another representation of the choices in this table. The left half of the table shows the bets for choice 1, and the right half for choice 2. Within each choice, the bets are represented as a payoff chance pair. For example, I can read from the table that bet A involves a 66% chance of $2,400, a 1% chance of $0, and a 33% chance of $2,500. Bet B involves a 100% chance of $2,400. I can then break up these payoff chance pairs to create an equivalent representation as in this second table. I have split the outcomes in bets B and C. For example, I have written the 100% chance of $2,400 in option B as a 66% chance of $2,400 and a 34% chance of $2,400. I have written the 67% chance of $0 in bet C as a 66% chance of $0 and a 1% chance of $0. With this split, you can see that the bets in the bottom two rows of choice 1 and choice 2 are the same. Both choice 1 and choice 2 involve a choice between, in one bet, a 1% chance of nothing, and a 33% chance of $2,500, and in the other bet, a 34% chance of $2,400. That common bet in choice 1 and choice 2 is paired with a 66% chance of the same payoff regardless of the preferred bet. For choice 1 that common payoff across bet A and bet B is $2,400. For choice 2, that common payoff across bet C and bet D is $0. This representation allows us to see that preferring bet B to bet A and bet C to bet D 
violates the axiom of the independence of irrelevant alternatives. Under that axiom, two gambles mixed with an irrelevant third gamble will maintain the same order of preference as when the two are presented independently of the third gamble. In this case, the two bets are contained in the last two rows. The irrelevant alternative is the 66% chance of $2,400 or $0. It is an irrelevant alternative as the payoff is the same regardless of whether you choose A or B or C and D. I can express this in terms of the formal definition of the independence of irrelevant alternatives axiom. The formal definition states that if X and Y are lotteries with X weekly preferred to Y, and P is the probability that a third option Z is present, then PZ plus 1 minus PX is weekly preferred to PZ plus 1 minus PY. For each of the choices in our lottery, X is a 1 in 34 chance of $0 and a 33 in 34 chance of $2,500. Y is a 100% chance of $2,400. Z is $2,400 in choice 1 and $0 in choice 2. If P equals 0, we simply have X is weekly preferred to Y. For any non-zero value of P, such as the 66% in both choices, the preference between X and Y should not change. Here's another intuitive way to think about this bet. Suppose I am going to generate one number between 1 and 100 randomly. If a number between 1 and 66 is generated, you win the prize in the first row. If number 67 is generated, you win the amount in the second. If a number from 68 to 100 is generated, you win the sum in the third. Suppose that you know that the number generated is between 1 and 66. Would you prefer bet A or B in choice 1? As you would win $2,400 with either choice, you will be indifferent. You will similarly be indifferent between bet C and D in choice 2, winning $0 no matter what. Suppose instead that a number between 67 and 100 is generated, but you don't know which. If you prefer A to B, you should also prefer C to D. In each choice, you effectively face the same bet. Let's assume for the moment that you prefer A and C. Finally, suppose you don't know what number will be generated. We have just determined that if you know the ticket is between 1 and 66, you are indifferent between the options. But if between 67 and 100 is drawn, you prefer A and C. You do not prefer B or D when the ticket range is 1 to 66 or 67 to 100. So you should not prefer B or D when the ticket number is unknown. However, the responses to the bets generated by Kahneman and Tversky and many other experimentalists suggest that when the number is unknown, the size of the certain amount for numbers 1 through 66 does matter. This irrelevant alternative is changing the preferences of the experimental participants.